Right, we now move on to the... Um, what are we doing? The communications and engagement plan. So we've got the document. How do we go out and talk to the public about it? We have, uh, once again, workshop this. And we have online uh, Kenneth and Wendy. Kenneth, do you want to start by opening this item? Kenneth, are you there? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Kenneth and here. Yes, uh, I will talk to the item, but I'd just like to also introduce Dan Lambert, who will talk to the communication aspect of our approach. Um, so just by way of giving you a brief summary. So the objective of our enga communication engagement approach um, in, in its totality is to ensure that we have an enhanced and elevated conversation with Aucklanders based on the big issues that have been discussed today. Uh, we want to ensure that we provide high quality representative feedback to inform decision making um, and that we inclusively engage all Aucklanders um, encouraging participation from Māori, young people and all those diverse communities uh, who we typically don't hear from um, on, on these occasions and given the seriousness of the, of the issues at hand. We also want to deliver a communications and marketing campaign that raises awareness, understanding and the opportunity for Aucklanders to have their say on the, on the recovery budget. We also are looking to increase levels of digital engagement, which is an important way that the public can have access to the information and provide their feedback and deliver quality advice to elected members. Uh, there are three key phases to our approach as stipulated in our report. December to February, we focused uh, primarily on raising awareness of the issues and the choices Auckland faces at this time. From February to March, our focus is on encouraging Aucklanders to have a say. And from March to July, it's really about thanking Aucklanders for participating in the process and communicating the decisions and what they mean for them. Uh, the consultation period starts from 22nd of February to 22nd of March. We have over 50 Have Your Say events planned across the region and at local board level. We're looking to increase communication from different groups through community partners who have strong networks into those demographic groups and communities across the region. We're also looking to use new innovative ways of engaging with Aucklanders, uh, progressing our work with online webinars, the new engagement platform, uh, phone interviews, online workshops with community partners and so forth. Just uh, to give you a flavour as to how we're trying to do things differently and continue to improve and innovate the way we engage with Aucklanders. And finally, perhaps the most pertinently, is we, uh, we've designed an approach that takes into account uh, possible changes to alert levels uh, and going into lockdown. And that means we have to be agile and be able to think on our feet in regards to how we engage Aucklanders over the, over the month that we're out for the consultation. Uh, in terms of reaching people, uh, targeted letters, emails are going to be quite key in regards to um, communicating and to engaging the, the, the public. Multiple e-databases uh, across the organisation have been employed to reach people that we already have contact details with, who are really engaged with Auckland uh, the Council in different ways. Examples of these are our rates database, which has over 274,000 emails, addresses. Uh, our people's panel, which has over 40,000 Aucklanders who are committed to participating in surveys that Auckland Council offers. Our libraries database is also going to be activated, which has over 500,000 Aucklanders signed up. Uh, and our 80 HOP users, We'll be communicating to them so they understand about the opportunity there is to participate and what the issues are that we'd like their feedback on. We have corporate relationships that we're also activating. An uh, example of this is Countdown, who have agreed to help promote awareness of the consultation process and uh, opportunity in their stores across the region. Our transport hubs are also being activated as well, given they are places where the public congregate, where we will be promoting uh, and raising awareness of the consultation. Uh, and Panuku, uh, web, the Panuku website is also being used to provide information to people who follow uh, that particular CCO. So we, this is a cross-council uh, effort, I guess is the other point to take from that, where we are engaging with our CCOs to reach as many organisms as possible. Webinars are quite a critical uh, role, have quite a critical role to play in terms of how we uh, engage with Aucklanders online to have that conversation around the issues. We will have uh, our subject matter experts and elected members present 
to be able to um, converse and front those conversations. <clears throat> and our community events and have your say events, as I mentioned earlier, which will either be council led or where we will be um, in a way piggybacking on events that are really happening, happening during the consultation period, such as the Pasifika event, uh, other local board led events and our community partner events uh, during the consultation period. Our advisory panels have uh, played quite a critical role. They've had some input into the design, but will also provide their feedback given their role in the community on the consultation topics. And our targeted uh, communications or commu community engagement efforts with partners, such as the Media Design School to reach our youth audience, is going to be quite critical as well. So overall, um, there are three key ways that we're looking to engage face-to-face -face with our stakeholder events, online, through our email, social media, and digital platforms, hard copies, which will be available at libraries, services, our service centres, uh, as well as phone interviews, as uh, given the popularity of that medium uh, during the emergency budget consultation. So we really are providing as many different ways for Aucklanders to have their say in, uh, in this process keeping in mind that if we change alert levels, we will adapt accordingly. <clears throat> if we move uh, COVID levels, uh, COVID-19 uh, alert levels during the consultation period, we will look to obviously minimize the, uh, minimize the, uh, the risks to public safety. And we will do that essentially by uh, canceling events, face-to-face -face events uh, in the community and increasing our online presence and use of digital platforms and channels for people to have their say, um, as well as using the telephone, which would be quite a, uh, an important way for people to provide feedback if they prefer that option. It will, uh, we will also look to uh, leverage more of our internal staff across the organisation to assist with the process. Uh, should that be a viable option uh, if, we, uh, if, our, if the alert levels escalate um, at this time, uh, during that time? In terms of closing the loop with the public so that they trust the engagement process, uh, we're looking to provide uh, information to the public in two stages. Firstly, an update during the consultation period to thank uh, Aucklanders for participating and let them know that we're working through the feedback and the timeline towards making decisions before we go back to them uh, at the end of the process once the elected members have made decisions as to what those decisions were. And we will feed that information back through all our different mediums, the website, uh, through our digital platforms, through our community partners, through our people's panel newsletters, as examples. Running parallel but separately to the consultation process, we are also deploying an independent survey through Conway Brunton. This uh, survey will focus on two questions, the overall budget and uh, climate change and it will ensure that we have a robust and representative uh, feedback. Uh, we, we provide robust representative feedback on the issues to uh, elected members based on a sample that represents the Auckland demographic population. Uh, and the sample size is uh, just over 4,000. It will go down to local board level um, with a sample size of 200. The survey is uh, 10 minutes in duration uh, and we'll cover those two questions only. The reason being it uh, allows us to cost efficiently be able to cover those two topics uh, robustly um, and provide that information to decision makers uh, so they have another uh, way of confidently understanding what public sentiment is on, the particular, on those two particular topics. Uh, and the reporting will be available in April uh, to inform uh, the deliberations and decisions at that time. The uh, survey will also be quality controlled through our peer review process with the University of Auckland uh, and we'll be following all industry best practice standards um, so that we can, full, we can have full confidence in the results. At this point, I'll pass it over to Dan Lambert to take us through the communications approach, and then we will jointly uh, be available to respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kenna. Dan. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Kia ora koutou, um, councillors and mayor. Um, so the, um, just to add briefly to Ken's comments, um, 
to support the engagement, we will be running a communications campaign uh, with the goal of making sure as many Aucklanders as possible are aware of the consultation, um, that they understand the key issues and choices that we're facing, um, and they have the op they know that they have the opportunity to have a say. Um, the key action from the campaign will be encouraging people to visit um, the akhaveyoursay.nz uh, website um, to have a say on our recovery budget. Um, and uh, in addition, um, as Ken has said, we will be making um, the consultation material and form widely available through uh, means that are also not online. So in, in um, you, you know, directly in our premises and, and other areas. Um, so the campaign will run on uh, radio, online and print uh, through our direct engagement with news media. Um, and of, as always, through our own channels, including the Our Auckland magazine delivered to households, uh, social media uh, and, and our website. Um, and the campaign itself will feature uh, real Aucklanders talking about the issues that, that they care about uh, and that are featured in the consultation, um, as well as um, a prominent um, voice from our councillors and elected members talking directly with their communities and through the uh, portfolios that they lead on. Um, and uh, and then once the campaign is concluded, there will also be a, a follow-up. Um, thank you to Aucklanders and closing the loop to ensure that people understand uh, what happened with the um, decisions following. So I think that's that pretty much covers it from me. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kenneth. I'll ask if there are any questions from the room first. Councillor Casey. Dan, can you just remind me what's going into our Auckland? Is the actual consultation form being printed in it? Uh, yes, uh, through the chair, yes, that's correct. The, the um, so the, the Our Auckland magazine will um, feature the recovery budget on the cover uh, and there'll be a whole lot of material and a sort of feature article um, referring to the consultation document and website. But if people um, would prefer to fill out a, an on a paper form and post it in, we'll be providing that um, within the magazine as well. I, do, I had an idea as you were talking and that is that it'd be really good for councillors to get a whole bundle of consultation forms for us to give out our various things that we do. I know we get a pack, but there's usually just a couple in it. It would be actually quite good if, if people want to get a substantial amount, say 20 consultation forms. I'm sure that can be arranged. That's right, isn't it, Kenneth? We're certainly looking into it, yes. Thank you. Uh, second question for Councillor Coon. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, Namahi Nui, Ken and team. Thank you for the huge amount of work that's gone into this. And I guess the silver lining of COVID is that we've come to um, develop whole lots of different ways of engaging that we didn't used to do before, which is great. Um, the question I have relates to, um, I've raised a few issues around um, how we not how we engage with um, those who are determined to be regional stakeholders, but just who we assess as regional stakeholders as opposed to other groups. And I just wanted to thank Kylie, Warren and the team who've all come back um, to really address those issues that I raised. And it was really a useful process to go through that. And not all councillors have been in the loop. So I just thought it would be useful to highlight where we landed in terms of particularly the information that's going to come to councillors um, for us to do our decision making um, regarding those groups and organisations that um, have an interest in the regional sorry, not the regional, in the recovery budget um, and, and how we're going to have an assessment of their, their feedback. So that was my, my question, just to clarify how that's going to happen and what changes we're looking to put in place. Kenneth, do you want to do that or do you want me to get Kylie back? I think you know, Kylie might be best place to answer that at this time. Yeah, okay, hold on. Thank Through you, the Kylie. chair, uh, we do have Warren online who can speak okay. to how we're going to report on it. On, but the report is coming on the 21st of April. Warren, do you want to jump in here? Sure, Kylie. Uh, look through the chair. Um, 
Yes, so from a reporting perspective, uh, how we will be reporting uh, stakeholders as a whole, so organisations, anyone who has uh, identified that they are giving feedback on behalf of an organisation. In the final summary report, we will have two sections and a summary table. So the two sections we will have will be those, uh, the feedback that we've received via the regional stakeholder event. So anyone who's provided feedback through that. And secondly, we will be providing a summary of all the organizations um, uh, excluding um, those that have provided feedback through the event. So we should be able to provide you with all the information from all organizations, at least a summary of that. Thank you. I think that's going to be really useful for our decision making. Thank you, Councillor. And again, thank you, Kylie, for your work around that. Thank you. Uh, with no further questions from the room, I'll go to those online and start with Councillor Cooper. Um, kia ora, Madam Chair. Um, my questions are around um, some of the um, consultation processes we use, and in particular, um, using local board meetings their official business meetings as part of it. And I just want to give a little bit of background. Councillor Henderson and I represent over 170,000 people in our ward, um, around 50,000 in one and around 110, 120 in the other. And our experience of those, and, and I'm going to speak for myself, has been that um, our last year we had two people at, the, at, at out of, of 50,000 residents coming to one and a, maybe one, if none, at the other one representing over uh, around 120,000 people. And that I'm just wondering the value of these when it's really evident that we've had a massive increase in um, online um, submissions and we're getting basically a handful from some wards. Um, so I guess that's my question, though. I also want to commend you for putting, making many more webinars this time. I think we'll get a lot more engagement. But, yeah, I just want to know if it's, it's, you know, what is the value of us continuing to do that, advertising, getting everybody ready? Um, and in actual fact, you can have a public forum. Before that, there can be 20, 30 people in the room. They get heard about their issue in public forum, and then they all leave, even though there is the public consultation for our document straight after. Right, well, who would like right, to would like answer to that? that? Through the Chair. Um, so I commend Councillor Cooper on raising the issue because it, it is something that has vexed us uh, year on year in terms of getting the um, those events right in the sense that we know, firstly, that uh, our digital channels are becoming more and more viable as feedback options for people. But we also need to find a counterbalance in terms of making sure that we are still offering opportunity for face-to-face -face engagement. Um, so when we design and deliver the engagement events uh, at the local level, that that conversation in the design as to, well, is this going to be a viable event and will we still get participation from the public and people along is something that goes into determining whether we should have that event or not. And so um, as we plan to have these events, of which there will be over 50, we've accounted for that in the thinking to make sure that they are. We're holding each of our um, each of our events uh, to various KPIs to make sure that the, we, we do get people along to make the resourcing uh, contribution the council makes to those um, a fair uh, a fair return on the amount of time and resource investment that goes into it. So it has been a very important part of our thinking in terms of designing our events at the local level, and we'll continue to look at that to make sure we are considering those issues. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor, just to add a political slant to that, I think we've, you know, we've started this Team Auckland and it's been quite successful too as we've worked through the workshops on the recovery budget. And I think it's really important that collectively we talk to local boards about their face-to-face -face times and how to enhance the awareness around those meetings um, and what sort of publicity we can do to support the local board uh, driven ones um, as, as they meet the needs of those individual communities. Uh, but good point you've raised, thank you. Councillor Filipina. Uh, thank you, Chair. 
tena kuhurua chenomenen mahalo lava lawa fiona ali imali manu Kenneth. Look, my question is, um, who do we speak to about uh, our regional have your say events with our local boards and how they will be run? Kenneth, I think that's to you. Through the chair, uh, thank you for the question. <laughs> so <clears throat> you can talk to myself uh, offline uh, and the team uh, with the knowledge that we are having briefing sessions with elected members prior to events so that their input can be considered in terms of how we run the regional events in a way that's going to best work for everybody. Um, but I look forward to having that conversation if that's going to be helpful with you offline. Okay, I love it. And Chair, just one more. Um, if you have a look um, at the 10-year budget 20, the communications and engagement plan under the heading of uh, a spokesperson, can we just make one subtle change uh, to that, and that is in regards to uh, the ward councillors, and just to change local to a ward level? Um, because I know, as uh, Councillor Cooper already has said, that there's two councillors um, in, in, in the ward that they represent and not a local level with our, um, with our local boards. Just one subtle change, please. Sorry, Councillor, where did you want that in the uh, resolution? No, no, I, 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 I just need to change it under spokespeople. Oh, of course. OK, I've got you. Right. I guess we can do that. Um, Peter and I can do yeah. that. Thank you. Is, is that OK, um, gentlemen, just to change that, please? No problem. I think so. That's fine. OK, Councillor Darby. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Kenneth and Dan and others. Uh, look, uh, my question relates to uh, the effectiveness of engagement, and I acknowledge the big leaps we've taken in that area. Um, Kenneth, there's a focus on, um, or there's reference to engaging with young people. I'm particularly interested in how we are going to engage with those uh, too young to vote. Now, that is mentioned in the Auckland Establishment legislation under Section 9. 2B, and it's it's. I've only just noticed this. That makes special mention of engaging effectively with those too young to vote. So, can you outline to us how we are going to effectively engage with those too young to vote? Thank you. For, thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Darby. So, the. People who are too young to vote, uh, they obviously will have an opportunity to participate in all the events that we've, we've, we're holding uh, across the region. Have you say events online? They can give their feedback that way. Um, I guess it, it really depends on how we define too young to vote in terms of the age group. We'll obviously be quite dependent on parents, um, older siblings, um, and older people to help um, get that message out and to help with, the, with communicating and engaging with people who are quite young. Um, but uh, the opportunity for young people overall to participate is something that we're really um, cognizant of, which has seen us go to the, what I would call the experts, the young people themselves, uh, through the Media Design School, for example, who are running their own social media campaign aimed at young people, and I think the people who are too young to vote would be in that group, um, using, as I said, social media, digital platforms to really reach those, those demographic groups in language that they understand in a way that they can embrace, which I think is quite uh, an, a new, an innovative and new way that we're looking to approach this. Um, given the technical skills that they will have both in the communication engagement space at the school, um, but also given they are of that demographic profile themselves to some extent. Um, and I think they'll be able to do it in a more relevant way than we can. And that's the, I think, the beauty of being able to collaborate with external groups like the school, um, like our youth councils, who have that kind of reach in those particular target groups. Kia ora. Kia ora. So just um, look, um, 
I'm sure we'll see a breakdown of um, engagement with young people, you know, the under 29s, under 25s. It would be good to see the breakdown um, when we receive the public feedback for those under 18 uh, so that we can actually work better to uh, reach this category, this demographic going forward. The second question relating to this, how does the survey uh, reach those too young to vote? How does the survey itself, you know, this is the um, independent survey you referred to earlier. You mean the Colmar Brunton uh, one, Councillor? Yeah, yeah, the, sorry, the Colmar Brunton survey. How is that going to reach those too young to vote? So um, if Warren's online, he can re remind us of the actual uh, age threshold for the survey, but I believe it'll be somewhere between 15 and 18. Um, uh, so Kim, yes, um, th through the chair. Um, so our uh, sample is made up of those aged 18 plus. Okay, so that Colmar Brunton survey won't take into account um, a category that's it's identified in the legislation as being important. And Chair, look, I'll just leave it at this because I know this is, we need to get better at this and we will, and Kenneth is leading on that and doing a sterling job. Uh, the point I'm making is um, increasingly we're looking, we're operating in a climate change world and this part of our population uh, they are going to be living our decisions the longest and we really need to improve our reach into those um, young people and particularly under 18s. Thanks, uh, Councillor. Point taken. Um, and uh, I think the Chief Financial Officer has taken that on board as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson. Yeah, thanks. Uh, a couple more questions about the Colmar Brunton uh, poll that's been taken, Kenneth. Um, you, you mentioned in your introductory comments that there's two questions that are going to be asked, one to do with the overall budget and the other to do with climate change, I think it was. Um, I, I'm looking at the Colmar Brunton uh, questionnaire that we used for the emergency budget and, and, I, and I see understandably in the first instance there's, there's quite a few questions to do with uh, you know, where people live, their income, number of people in the house, that sort of thing. We asked one question, substantive question there, was to do with the uh, support or otherwise for the level of the rate increase. So my question to you is, what are the specific questions that are going to make up that 10 minute interview and is there a specific question to do with the proposed rate increase or increases. Warren, are you on hand to answer the specific question? University of Auckland are currently oh, drafting. Warren, sorry, uh, we just missed the uh, beginning. Sorry, I sorry to interrupt you. We just missed the beginning. Could you just start that again? Thank you. Sure, sorry. Um, so through the chair, our, um, our questions that Colmar Brunton and the University of Auckland are currently drafting through the independent survey are aligned to question one and question two of the uh, feedback form. So that is the overall budget question and the climate change question. Okay, so I'm taking from that there's not a specific question on whether they support the proposed rate increase. It's just going to be, do you uh, overall do you support um, the recovery budget, something along those lines. Uh, through the chair, it's um, yeah, as I say, it's it's uh, closely aligned, very closely aligned to question one in the feedback form. I, I, could, could you um, could you just read that exact wording out again? Because for me, I mean, I, I, actually, I, I can go to it. Um, if if I go to question one and. Uh, in the what is your so what is your opinion on the proposed recovery budget support do not support other don't know that's a pretty broad question I guess and especially in light of the previous Colmar Brunton which was essentially uh, 
all about the proposed rate increase, that's going to come back with uh, um, a lack of precision, in my view, in terms of some of the key aspects of that proposed recovery of the proposed recovery budget, not least of which is the level of rates increases. Councillor, the second paragraph of question one talks about the rate increase. It says we are proposing a one-off five percent average average general rates increase for 2021-22 rather than the previously planned 3.5 percent increase. The increases would return to 3.5 percent each year thereafter. We are also proposing to increase our borrowing in the short term, continue to make cost savings and sell more surplus property. Mm. So it does directly reference the rates increase. Yeah, that, that's on the feedback form. My question is, is that same information going to be in the Colmar Brunton? Um, through the chair, I can answer that. Yes, um, so we will have um, all the information in the feedback form on the question on the Colmar Brunton survey, plus some additional. Okay, so when we've got a 10 minute interview, we've, um, we've got a period of time that's devoted to uh, collating the, the more personal information about the respondent and what I'm hearing from you, and it would be useful to see this, see these questions um, as they are available, it's certainly helpful during the engagement process, that those two key questions will have some backdrop to them and the backdrop to the recovery budget approval or otherwise there will be a specific section that deals with the the proposed rates increase there's a lot of things to weigh up to say whether you support the budget um, the recovery budget or not but what I'm hearing from you is that the the preamble is going to go over pretty much what the chair just read out then. Uh, through the chair, yes, that's right. So obviously with 10 minutes, we are very limited in terms of um, uh, there's a lot of information to portray. So what Colmar Brenton and University of Auckland are trying to do is to try and pick out that key information, which is clo very closely aligned to um, what is uh, already said in that feed in the feedback form question. So we should have the preamble in there, um, as, as I say, as well as some additional information as well from okay. the consultation document. Okay, thank you. Final question, Madam Chair. Um, I'm assuming that that information will be made available to elected members uh, when it's, uh, you know, when it's um, been finalised, so so that that we have a sense of what is actually being asked in this poll, which we pay, you know, a lot of money for, and, and which um, number of us of us anyway put, you know, a reasonable amount of stock in. So I'll certainly, for one appreciate the exact questions as we had with the emergency budget being made available um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay with that, Warren? Sorry, having a bit of trouble with my connection. Um, yes, so they are currently being um, drafted and finalised through the university and through Colmar Brinton. It will go through a process as well of, of cognitive testing with Aucklanders just to make sure that uh, the understanding of the questions and the interpretation of the questions is, is correct. Um, and then happy to, um, to, to share it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have no further questions. Do I have any comments? In the room, Councillor Casey. Um, most councillors will have received the wonderful printout, or at least by email, the printout of all the Have Your Say stroke consultation events. There are 63 on here, so first of all, congratulations at the breadth and range of these events. Here's my, here's my plan, and I wanted to share it with others. In the past, I have really enjoyed visiting north, south, east and west of this region. And if ever there was a time for councillors to, to do that, it's now. To support the ward councillors through this recovery budget. And so I'm very happy to go through this to find out where I can visit. 
and I'm very happy to team up with any other councillors who want to go and do the magical mystery tour over that month because it's a you know it, 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 it is just that so yeah happy to discuss and carpool and anything else that people want to do but I think we should go en masse it's our budget if it was a regional thing to do it's this one Thank you, Councillor. I'd absolutely endorse that, and I know that the Deputy Chair and myself are planning some as well, so um, we can talk amongst ourselves around that. Any other comments? Well, I just want to uh, add one thing for myself. I just want to thank Kevin uh, Kenneth rather, and the team for their work around this. Look, there is a legal requirement for us to provide spoken interaction um, in, as far as our consultation go, but I think our webinars are proving increasingly successful in that, fa that fact that COVID has done one thing, it's taught us to be more agile online. We will, of course, also have written, in-person, telephone and digital opportunities. So um, thank you to the team, and I would like to move the recommendations around uh, the recovery budget um, communications and engagement plan. Do I have a seconder, Deputy Chair? Thank you. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against. Aye. aye. Against. Carried unanimous, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Right, now move to item 12.